show. Why is this show called This You May Ask? So I'll tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make them establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to, need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Alexandra Wenman. But before that, I would like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy. And I use um, past life regression, future life progression, um, angelic Reiki, angel cards, meditation, hypnosis, to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny. So if you feel at a crossroads in your life, then I love to help you heal your past, create your future, transform your present, so you can take control of your destiny in here and now. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey and a mini guided meditation of angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Alexandra Wenman, who will be sharing her wisdom about Archangel Alchemy and how we can work with angelic energies for empowerment, self-healing and guidance about your own journey. Now, Alexandra Wenman is holistic therapist, intuitive channel, writer and speaker. She is the founder of Cutting Edge New Healing System, Precious Wisdom, which is a powerful and empowering technique which assists in positive transformation through the process of spiritual alchemy. Alexandra is a qualified angelic Reiki master teacher, advanced theta healer, one command practitioner and rainbow children teacher who offers bespoke and transformational one-to-one -one sessions and workshops, which is designed to help you heal from past trauma and empower yourself so that you can create your best life ever. Previously editor of a national holistic magazine, articles by and about Alexandra have appeared in Spirit and Destiny, Chalit's Fate, Natural Health and Kindred, Sp Kindred Spirit magazines, and her first in a series of children's books on archangels entitled Digital Angels is out now. And I've read it and it's really good for children. Alexandra also runs online courses as a popular public speaker and has her own show entitled The Alexandra Wenman Show. Now, from my personal experience, Alex is a beautiful individual who has the most wonderful knowledge to help and guide you and someone who can really help you on your personal journey. So without further delay, hello, Alex, and welcome to the, Arcane, to the Angels and Destiny Show. How are you today? <laughs> I'm great, Ray. Thank you so much for having me again, honey. It's wonderful to be back and to connect with you again. Brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant to have you here. And you notice, I know you said Archangel, but then instead of Angels and Destiny show, I know. So Archangel, you know, they're, they're, waiting, they're, they're waiting to come in. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, then I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Alex and I want to be part of this show. So please do not be shy. We'll try to answer any questions or comments live um, during the show. But if not, we will come back um, once the show is finished. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then please give it a thumbs up um, to like it and subscribe so you can get updates on all recordings. So, Alex, why don't you tell us how you got started with angels, how you experienced them? What do the angels want us to know? And can an angel become human or vice versa? And what is Archangel Alchemy and how can it help us? <laughs> all, the, all, the, all the questions at once. Um, how did I get started with angels? Well, uh, probably um, got started with angels when I was very little, um, when I was very young. My mum was really into angels. She, was, uh, she raised us Catholic and um, it was something that my mum sort of would tell, teach me to pray to. But I remember being very small and being able to see at that young age. And I could see sort of lights in my room. I would feel and I, and I could see very clairvoyantly at that age too. But I didn't really realise it was something that most people, um, it didn't come naturally to most people. So I could often see spirit and things in the room around me. I was very visual. Um, but I definitely saw lights and things around. And then... It, it just became sort of something that as I grew up I would I would use I would always call on the angels I would just say angels please help with this or angels please help with that ever since I was very young and then I went through a really difficult time in my 20s when I moved to London and kind of shut it down and I think at the time I'd, I'd had a boyfriend that was very non-spiritual and was like that's just weird stop it and I kind of think I was just getting on with life you know I just wanted to be a normal girl and kind of get on with life 
And um, it sort of led me to uh, quite a number of really deep, dark nights of the soul. And the first one was um, sort of the the first, I guess, seven years I spent in London was really hard. It was like a seven year sort of dive down into the underworld, if you will. And then at the end of that, I trained in, um, I went and did a, a the theatre healing course actually, and we did a, a reading with angels and the angels just came flooding back in. It was absolutely incredible. And um, it was an experience of angelic energy that I hadn't had before to that degree. It was almost like keeping them at bay for seven years and then suddenly going, okay, then if you're there, show me. It sort of like the lid came off. I mean, I'd I'd sort of started saying, well, if you're there, give me a sign. And I started getting the feathers and things again. And then in this in this particular workshop, it was almost as though they were there waiting for me to just open up to them. Um, and I had what I, I'm pretty sure was a, a spontaneous Kundalini awakening. Um, and it was like my the whole room disappeared, room full of 50 people sort of disappeared. And this angel sort of stepped into me. It was like I merged with the angel or I, I became the angel. It was a very extraordinary experience. It was really holographic and very, very physical. It was like I could see him, but I was him at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I've come to understand a little bit more about why that was. Um, it was as though I kind of had feet on the earth and planets orbiting my head and the whole universe, I could feel and see the whole universe. It was just incredible. And this rush of love, like electricity in golden light was rushing through my body. Um, I now know that it was Metatron and I found out afterwards kind of who it was and asked who it was. And he brought me all these geometric shapes and symbols and he was talking to me about alchemy. I now know that he was coming with a message about precious wisdom and also about Archangel Alchemy, which is uh, my way of working with the angels. It's a kind of an alchemy. I work with their symbolism, their color, their sacred fires. Um, but it's so much more than that. I sort of teach people to how to embody the essence of the angel themselves. So, uh, and, you know, they do sort of similar things to this in Angelic Reiki, which I know you and I have trained, both trained in Ray. Um, but in my experience, you don't need necessarily symbols or anything like that to allow you to do this. So the way that I kind of show people how to work with angels is to be able to just merge with the angelic energy in your own right, because essentially we are angels. We are angelic. It, to me, the angels represent our relationship. They're sort of the bridge between us and the divine. So it's like a, a level of consciousness that you're tapping into or a an aspect of divine consciousness that you're tapping into. Um, and their Hebrew names mean that as well. So it's actually really, um, you know, it's actually very multifaceted, but actually really simple. And it's all around, it's all about love. Hi, Jackie. Nice to meet Hi, you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so I experience it in a very holographic way these days when I experience angels, because it's like I, I feel the sort of qualities of that angel as though they're, in a way, my own qualities. It's like if I invoke the angel, I'm invoking those gifts within myself and I'm sort of becoming that angel. Um, yeah, and I'm actually working on a, a, a beautiful oracle deck at the moment, which is going to show people how to do that. So how to, uh, what the angel represents, who it is, when to invoke it, how to work with it, what the symbolism is and the colours and everything surrounding it and then how to sort of invoke that essence for your own life because we we can talk about being on a spiritual path and we can go and we can get all the certificates we want. We can train in different modalities. But in my opinion, if you're not walking the talk and if you're not embodying light, then there's no point to any of it. Um, unfortunately, embodying light and embodying, you know, the, the spiritual essence and embodying your divinity is if, for those people who are who have embarked on that path it's not always easy it's usually a pretty difficult path because we don't just embrace our light we also have to go into our shadow and look at our shadow and you know i've experienced probably uh, some of the most difficult kind of falling away of that which isn't serving me in my life in order for me to hold this light and to bring this work forward and there was a long time 
where I thought, well, you know, am I actually going to be doing this work? And I sort of surrendered it and shelved it and thought, well, maybe that's not for me because for a while I was I was going a lot more into sort of different kinds of healing work. I was doing goddess work and I was doing my precious wisdom work and I was doing um, – uh, sort of a lot more galactic work and a lot more shadow work and I sort of thought well maybe maybe I've done my my bit with the angels maybe that path has been walked and maybe that's not where my where I'm meant to be situated in terms of my work and then all of a sudden they just sort of again after seven year hiatus another seven year kind of oh, I said that. Yeah, not really a hiatus. They were always around, but it was like they stepped back and went, right, here you go, into your underworld again. Go and do your shadow work and go and, you know, it, it's like digging down into the foundations. But I can feel that not just for me, but globally now, we have this massive influx of angelic energy coming in and it's really ramping up. It's like the light is returned, like the lights come back, it's like the light switched on in my own life now. But I have a deeper understanding understanding of angelic energies than I ever did and and more how to embody it so yeah what was it what were the other questions <laughs> <laughs> okay so, so that's so that's how um, how you how you how you experience them so um what is archangel alchemy so yeah archangel alchemy is sort of my way of working with angels and it is a uh, because to me it is like an alchemy. To me, little by little, as you work with the angels, you are taking in, like bringing in your own angelic soul aspect and you're kind of diluting the human part of you with the angelic energies. And the more you work with the angels, the more it's like you're starting to embody the angel. You become the angel in human form. Ultimately, the path of enlightenment is about becoming divine. We're becoming divine humans and we are actually embodying that light. And, you know, we, I do believe that we are meant to be here walking on this earth as angels, as angelic beings. And when you find, when you kind of come at your life from that angelic perspective, you see and feel through the eyes of unconditional love. Now, that's not to say we're not human, but it's about coming at life with really deep compassion and understanding and, and trying to let go of the judgment because everything that happens in our outer life is a mirror for what's going on inside. And when you come at life from an angelic perspective, you understand that actually everything is a blessing and a chance to grow and learn. And so you kind of find that you stop judging people. And even when you have weirdness with people or misunderstandings, you look at it with, oh, what am I learning from this? What's what's the mirror? What is this interaction showing me? What does this person come to um, to teach me? And then you start to see the light, really see the divine light in every single person you come into contact with and you have these these beautiful moments like we did when you come, came to come on my show the other week such beautiful moments of really being able to see into a person's soul really getting to meet a person and look in their eyes and you can see the spark of light that exists within them and you know it's interesting because I do a lot of work with emotions and with like um, subconscious beliefs and all kinds of it's very holographic the work I do and even though I trained in other systems I don't really use any other systems other than my own way of working these days I've sort of developed my own my own processes and I have this ability because of my sensitivity being so kind of heightened now I have this ability to really feel what people are feeling and really tune into and almost um, I can pick up on emotions that if, if a person is holding trapped emotions that they haven't been able to acknowledge or get to, I can kind of feel it in my own body. And because of that experience, it's like if someone's saying one thing, I can feel it, well, if they're not telling the truth. Yeah. Stuff, but also I can see beyond, beyond the mask that we wear as humans. I can kind of see beyond the the outer kind of shielding and, and protection that a person has built up and I can see right into the essence of them and I can really see usually see the goodness that's there in a person um, and I realized I could do this for a long time but what what it used to do is it used to trip me up I'd almost be too naive and I would 
I would kind of think everyone's all love and light and everyone's going to be really nice to me and I wouldn't expect, you know, because I was seeing straight into their essence instead of seeing what was going on on the outside. Yeah. But I've developed it and now I know how to use it as a gift and I can see the outer and I can kind of gauge, oh, okay, right, that's their intention, but that's what's really going on, you know. And it's, I think that's part of being, you know, that's part of being an angelic human. I really do like not trying as much as you can not to judge people and really to see what's going on because most people who are behaving badly or you know if, if we're having a clash with them or they're not they're not doing kind of you know what they should be doing in terms of our judgment of what a good person should be most people only behave badly out of a belief that they're somehow lacking in love right or it's a lack mm. of knowledge or a lack of experience or a lack of opportunity so however good and however bad you know i always believe that um no matter how how much darkness a person has in them, there's always that spark of the divine. You know, there's nothing that exists outside of the divine. So in that way, you know, everyone has the potential. They might not be utilising it, but every single person has the potential to reach that angelic or divine level of consciousness. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I feel like there are, I feel like there are there is such a thing as angelic souls in my opinion and in in my experience it's not something that's like oh well these angelic souls are you know they've sort of come in as angelic um beings in human form really um but it's not like it's something that's you know just you are or you aren't to me it's something that is attainable to me it is like whoever has come in as this angelic soul is an ancient soul it's like a very very ancient old soul who's done the work time and time again work towards that that divine connection that oneness with god and oneness with their higher self and has sort of reached that level of knowing that oh wow actually we are all divine we are all we all have god within us we're not we're not separate from that that energy, that essence, we're all part of it. And in that way, we are all angels because, you know, that essence of us is that unique aspect of the divine having an experience in a, in a human body. So yeah, it's very holographic the way I see it. Yeah, yeah, be, be, because obviously if you were to look at that, that question, you know, um, uh, can angels become human and can humans become angels? If you look at it in black and white, it's kind of like, well, that might be a little bit difficult. But when you look at it holist, or, um, holi holist not holistically, hol holistic. Yeah, holistically, yeah. yeah. Holographically, multidimensionally. Yeah, yeah multidimensionally. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But you have humans that have had experience of being given their wings, you know, many times in meditation. I've been shown these are your these are your wings. This is this is your this is your light. This is your fire. It's like a, a heavenly kind of a fire that sort of burns from within you, and it's there's nothing light and fluffy about it when it kicks in. You know, it is it's pure power, and that's what love is. That's what unconditional love is. It's it's like it can be like a blazing inferno, and we think of like it's like holy fire, divine fire. It's it's like that Holy Spirit energy um it can be embodied and it and it and it is i believe our whole purpose to embody it now rather than just learn about it yeah. there's something in the you know the tree of life in the kabbalah there's all these different spheres and pathways which can also be represented by archangels and their qualities and the, all these spheres and pathways back to the divine on that path back to the divine but there's this one hidden sphere that cannot be taught and that's the sphere of gnosis duff it can't be taught because it comes from, you know, to me, it comes from love. It comes from your intention to be the best person you can be, to be the most loving person you can be. And if your intention is just, well, I'm going to study all this and be the best at it, you know, and, and get the certificate and, 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 and show off my my um my skills to learn amazing spiritual things and hail myself as a guru and you're kind of missing the point and on our planet at the moment we do have it's like the the time of the false prophets i hate to say it there's you know, there's a everyone's got to start somewhere right but there are a lot of people 
out there going, I've got a certificate, now I'm an expert. And I know you and I know that we've had to walk our talk and embody what we do before we can bring it out there. And I'm not coming from a place of judgment, but one of the biggest um, lessons I found on this path that I had to learn, and indeed I kind of say to my clients, this is going to be your, your, your probably your biggest lesson, is the lesson of discernment, of knowing what works for you, what doesn't work for you, becoming your own teacher, your own wisdom keeper, your own guru. And that's how the angels can help us because when you start to align with with each of their qualities and their messages, especially the archangels, they really will guide you towards that particular, the highest particular aspect of your journey that you need to be on. And they'll also kick you up the butt if you're not on it. You know, it's, it, it's, a ch it's challenging. If they're around you, they are, it's, it can be a bit all or nothing. I have to say, if something's not in alignment to your divine truth that, and you're working with these angels, they're like big daddies, you know. I've seen, um, I've seen seraphim that are so powerful that they're borderline terrifying, you know, they, they, and they sound like a dragon when they speak to you. It's not like they don't come in like la 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 yeah. <laughs> You know, it's fire and it's like... <sighs> And it's pure, pure power. And it's it's like, whoa, what is it? But it it is angelic. It is of the light. And it's um it's like when you see the cherubim with the four heads and the talons, you know, they they come in very, very fierce. It's it's but it's it's magnificent at the same time because it shows that we're capable of holding that power for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's, it's amazing, you know, sort of like when when the energy um of, of you know you do connect with with, with angelic energy so um so, so so sort of like you're you're saying if if we look at um it uh holistically and that we literally become the we we are the angel are we archangels as well or just angels or are they something separate you can connect to any level of angelic energy and you can embody any level of angelic energy you can embody um, guardian angel energy. You can act as a guardian angel for other human beings. Um, you can embody Elohim energy. You can. And it's just a matter of um, opening your consciousness, your awareness, and moving through those layers, opening to hold more light. Um, because the reason we can do that is because we are divine. We are the divine. There is nothing we cannot access. Um, I've been doing a lot of work around, you know, I feel like as a, as a human, as a consciousness and as a sensitive, obviously, um, we get influenced by the emotions of people around us. We get influenced by the energies of the place and a room. But if we look at that on a bigger scale, we also get influenced by the energies of the planets and the moon and the astrology, right? So we, we look at our astrology and our numerology and we're influenced by all of that. And, you know, there are many other factors, solar flares and geopathic stress and EMF and all these things that are barraging us all the time. I come from a belief and also I've been my own guinea pig in this. It is absolutely possible to transcend any interfering energies. We are not governed by the planets. We are in our humanness if we are coming from the belief that we're just mere little humans on a planet with no power whatsoever and we're, we're just like being buffeted around by things that are beyond the force of our control. But actually, as a divine consciousness, we have dominion over the elemental kingdom and we, do, we are able to transcend any energy that life throws at us and we are able to rise and sort of um, expand our conscious, our conscious awareness and our power out so much so that during, say, a Mercury retrograde, you can have Mercury retrogrades where it doesn't influence you. Mm. Unfortunately, the last one did with me because I kind of got caught up in it and I think there were some things I needed to learn. But I have had retrogrades where I've literally been like, nope, this is not going to impact me and I've really stood in my power and it hasn't, it just hasn't touched the sides. And, you know, it is, it's really we're coming from this perspective that, you know, we're in the centre being kind of, buffeted, if you will, 
Whereas actually if we expand our awareness out and realize that we are part of everything and all encompassing, then we can harmonize our energy field with everything. It's not about necessarily clearing anything or blocking anything. It's you just harmonize with it and you can harmonize with the energy of the space. We can actually be alchemists and that's where I, I work with um, the word alchemy a lot because I believe that alchemy means that we can change the state of something we can change the state of ourselves into a higher state we can change the energy around us into a higher state we can change our emotions into a higher state this is spiritual alchemy and when we work with the archangels they will help us to change the state of our consciousness our emotions our lives um quite simply from you know maybe living a life that isn't as fulfilling as you'd like it to be to living your most fulfilling life ever and you might have to go through a few hurdles and challenges. But, you know, in if you look at the alchemy process, it's about taking the, the kind of base raw material, which they would say is lead. But to us, it's like the human. You take the human. And we add more and more angelic light and energy. And we work and meditate with the angels. And we align ourselves more with those energies and their lessons and their gifts. And then we're diluting the human with light. And eventually what happens is that the human becomes so full of light that the human becomes an angel in human form, is embodying such a level of light and knowledge and wisdom that we are literally walking the earth as angels. And you come into a kind of a grace. You, you'll find that you just come into grace and, um, you know, you'll start to recognise it in the eyes of the people around you. You'll see their light. And you, you, you kind of, you'll bless everyone else, but you sort of won't, it's almost like you won't be able to be in the vicinity or in the, you don't want to be in the energy of people who aren't meeting you at that level in a way. It's, it's interesting. You will only kind of want to feel that, that love, you know, you, it's not that you're judging the other. It's just that it's not aligned with you anymore mm. in a good way. So you might find that pe people drop away from your life or experiences drop away from your life that are no longer serving you. Um, from a human perspective, it can be painful, but it is, you know, you're, you're, but you're also, I find that you're also, what's happening is you're falling more and more deeply in love with yourself, which is absolutely necessary on this path. So if somebody's been taking advantage of you or not, not seeing your light or not honoring your light, then you might find that you have to step away from that person or that experience with love. But that just means that you're able to more fully hold yourself with self-love yeah which which is which which is really really important i know a lot of clients that i see it's kind of like getting them to have that self-love for themselves to help them move move forward from where they are at, at the time because yeah if if you're allowing other people to dictate to you love then you're not you're not being true to yourself yeah exactly so I do these Archangel Alchemy classes um, online now through my, it's like, a, they're like one off, just one off classes. It's not like it's an ongoing um, healing system. They're just accessible. So if there's an Archangel and whose message resonates with you, you can come on, join the class. And we talk about that angel and we do exercises to help you embody more and more of their light. And this is what the Oracle cards are going to be about too. You'll be able to kind of either work your way all the way through the pack or you take a card and you, you'll get a message, but it's also more like a little, um, they're like little workshops really, where mm. you, you know, you just, you're learning how to bring that essence out in yourself. So, yeah, it's, yeah. It's the way, I'm, I'm the way they, to yeah, it's like, it's the way they showed me how to work with them. I've, I've worked with every single one of the archangels that I kind of am teaching about now worked with them they've turned up when i haven't even you know people say you have to ask for an angel to be with you not always they've turned up when i've least expected it it's like angelic intervention can just happen you know yeah Beautiful. yeah yeah you don't you don't always have to ask um for angels but if you want to get a connection with them just talk to them all the time i don't exactly. <laughs> It's like you know, every oh, no one else to talk to. I'll just talk to the angels. Chat to them about everything. You know, they they don't they don't they 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 don't they don't care. So, what do the angels want us to know about themselves? So you know, from what what they where you've um, connected, 
with them. And I know it will be different for every person when they connect with angels themselves. But have they given you sort of an overview about um, what they want us to know about ourselves? A hundred percent. And the first word that pops into my mind is devotion. And they want us to be utterly devoted to ourselves, to our soul, to, to understanding the nature of who we are. And one of the things that they constantly will say is remember who you are. Remember who you are. Know yourself. Know thyself. And it's like be curious. Like, well, who am I? Keep asking yourself that question. Who am I? What am I here to do? What am I doing? Follow the calling of your heart because it's your soul calling you home to it. And the angels are really here to support that, especially the archangels, because they really are here for our ascension. They want us to be elevated. They're really like the big daddies of the whole the whole thing, bridging us to the divine. And they want us to know that, you know, every single one of us has within us a leader. We're all leaders and we're all leaders and teachers and wisdom keepers of our own life. And they want us to feel our own magnificence. If you could really you know a lot of people when they first feel angelic love they just want to burst into tears because on some level it's almost as though you feel like you don't deserve it because the level of love is just off the scale the level of it's unconditional love and it is the most beautiful compassionate love but it's almost like a parent you know sometimes they can be tough that like their energy can be tough it will be like if you're not on your path Sometimes they'll pull the rug out from under you to get you on your path. But it's always done with love. And um, kind of never put you into a, a situation, nor will your higher self, that it knows you can't handle. So even if you feel like you're flailing around and all at sea and lost all your reference points, you're meant to be there. Trust that you're meant to be there, that, you're, that you've, you've, signed, you've signed up for it on some level. And even when you feel that you're most alone, you're not alone. They're always around. And now I can actually feel, I feel them when they step back and I sort of can feel them going, we just want to see what you're capable of now. We, that's all. We just want to see what you're capable of when, you know, we're not in, we're not kind of intervening. But, you know, there you probably feel like, that you, if you've been through a few trials and tribulations as life can throw at us, you probably now have had plenty of evidence that you're pretty protected, you know, that there's some kind of a force around that's going, don't worry, you know, it, it, when it gets too hairy, we'll step in, you know, unless it's part of your destiny to step out, you know. But, yeah, they, uh, they, they really want us to be utterly and beautifully and wholeheartedly deeply in love with ourselves devoted to ourselves and to really express the essence of our soul in the most beautiful way in the in the highest and best way we can and you can you do that by living your purpose by bringing your magnificence and expressing it in the highest and best way that you can whether whether you are a creative or whether you are analytical or whether whatever that is, whatever that looks like for you, live that, live that, and then you're being the essence of your angelic self on the earth. Yeah. And, it, and it's not just kind of like, you know, um, sort of like doing the spiritual path or anything, you know, if you're, if, you, if you're here to help people as in a plumber or a teacher or carpenter or builder, then that's then that's absolutely fine. You know, they enjoy and then that's your purpose. And, you know, the angels will be with you completely with that. It doesn't necessarily have to be, oh, I now need to do healing or this spiritual thing or which which I think sometimes right. people think. Um, yeah, you can be an angelic engineer. It's be where you are. You know, I, I used to work in magazines and I would go to work uh, even before I used to work for prediction. But before that, I worked for the Now magazine and that was a, like a celebrity kind of gossip bag. But I would always set the intention. I'm showing up for work and I'm bringing my angels with me. I'm bringing my light and, and I'm putting it into whatever I'm doing. So even if you're not doing exactly what it is you, you know would make you happy, bring your light to what you're doing because that's what's going to move you on. Be the angel in the place where you are and keep your eyes open. You know, if you feel into a, a situation you, we are offered opportunities all the time to become 
angelic, to become angels to other people. You know, those times when someone's in trouble or perhaps somebody needs money and they've lost their bus ticket or somebody needs help feel into situations. I often get guided, like I'll be out with a group of friends and I will literally get pushed up to a complete stranger to deliver a message. And I know you know what that's like, Ray, you know, and it's like, wow. One of my best friends now, the first night I met her, I went out to meet some friends and she was a mutual friend of somebody. And I walked in and just made a beeline for her and gravitated to her. And I was like, um, I don't know um, if you've been wondering this lately, but the angels are telling me you need to know that yes, they've heard you. Yes, you have a guardian angel. And yes, you, blah, blah, blah. and I delivered this message and she was like, I just asked for a sign if the angels are around me this morning. <laughs> and it was like her first big validation because I was like, right, you just need to know there's loads of angels around you. They want to know. Da, da, da. It was like I had to tell her. And I'd never met her before. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I've had that a few times where I've just been like where I've been out or out and about and I just have to turn to someone and go, oh, you need to know X, Y, and Z. And I'll always kind of check in and be like, I won't deliver any, I don't deliver bad news usually, but yeah. Yeah. Angels, yeah. angels don't bring bad news anyway. The angelic guidance is always loving and, and you know, a bit different from spirit guides. Sometimes spirit guides will be, come with a warning or something, but angels, yeah. it's always, you know, loving guidance leading you in the right direction. Oh, yeah, most, most definitely. It's, it's, it's always it's always un, un, unconditional love um, with them. Yeah, and, and it is once you've kind of like, you you felt the angel love, it's just absolutely, you just joyful tears. And um, yeah, it's, it's just, you, 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 you really can't, you, you really can't explain it. And you're actually going to be doing more about angels on the Angelic Summit next year, I think, 2020? Yes. Yeah, so the Angel, the Angelic Summit 2020 is run by a beautiful woman called Stephanie Lodge. And um, it's between the 11th and 18th of January. And so we're going to be doing lots of processes, interviews. It's a global meditation. The whole purpose of it is about raising the frequency to diamond earth, diamond earth frequency. Um, you know, and for those of you who might might not be aware, it's like we we've been evolving through various different evolutionary cycles. Um, what the angels tell me is that there are many of us who sort of started off as indigo children. We evolved through the crystal, the rainbow, and now what's happening is we're moving into diamond earth. We're returning to the purity of our hearts. We're returning to our original innocence, and this is why you might be finding, you know that your sensitivity is being raised up. And then there are many people going through these awakenings where, you know, you just want to cry at the drop of a hat or, you know, you're seeing the 1111, you, you feel that you're being activated in some way. At some level, we are all going through this in, a, in different and unique ways. And some of those ways are beautiful and euphoric and some of those ways are deep and painful and difficult. and this summit is really about that. It's about holding light, holding light for our planet, holding light for the people that are holding the light, really supporting them in the holding of that light, the bringing of that light, and really supporting this beautiful evolution that our Earth is in. And it, it's the angels really leading the charge in this because they are just the, 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 the epitome of the light bringers. So, yeah, it's going to be gorgeous. You can sign up for free. It's a free summit. So sign on up and and please join us i think it will be available to buy later on but i think if you watch it live it's it's completely free which is beautiful yeah, yeah very exciting. yeah and i think you've got the link on one of your pages so i'll post in here um and anyway so that people want to go straight into it they can actually go straight into it without thinking oh. oh i need to go into the what was it what was it they said again it was, what, was it again? <laughs> yeah. 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 i think it's just angelicsummit.com so that's the easiest way and it's on instagram i think it's b or angelic summit 2020 or something like that yeah yeah so as most of you know um i do angel cars and the last time alex was on she channeled Mary Magdalene, I think, didn't you? Or was it Mother Mary? One of the oh. two. I 
can't mm. remember. Well, it was one of the two, I think. It was, yeah. it was, it was, it was one of them. It was Probably one of the Mary. Mary. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think it might be Mother Mary, actually, rather than Mary Magdalene. Um, Queen of Angels, really. Yeah. So um, what we thought we might do is we might do a combination um, this week of both doing a card reading and Alex um, getting some insights. So I'm thinking if I do the card first and then we see what you get downloads or what you get okay. to, to, give, to give out for the card. Yeah? Yeah, perfect. We'll see, we'll see who comes through for the yeah. 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 So I'm not going to give you anything about this card. I'm just going to pull the card and then Alex is going to see what guidance comes down for it. So, so what does Alex, myself and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good? What does Alex, myself and everyone watching this need to know for our highest goods? Okay, so we've got cleansing waters purification activates the vibrant life force so i'll put that up there oh, card. wow it makes me think of having a nice bath <laughs> and yeah, i love I that you've got the lotus, the lotus rising mm. up from the mud it's and it is about that raising of consciousness it's we're all coming out of the silt now. I feel like there's such a return to light going on on the planet. It's been, um, you know, it's, it's going to get interesting yet, but I think, I feel like the magic's coming back, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the cards that I've been coming up recently have sort of like magic has been sort of like, um, sort of, sort of, sort of like uh, yeah, come, coming in. So why don't you see see if an archangel wants to come through and give us a message okay i'm already just, feeling just the the very, yeah, very prominently um so the angel coming in is called sariel and sariel is an angel that's very connected with kind of helping us to work with our shadow side and and bringing us out of the shadow and into our light and the word that Sariel's bringing here tonight is grief. And this angel, oh gosh, it's making me feel a bit tearful. But this angel is sort of helping us to connect with our grief, with the, the grief that we've been holding. And it feels there's grief we may hold on a personal level and there's grief that we hold on a collective level. Um, this feels like a grieving of... A, sort of a disconnection or a um, a slight denial of a part of ourselves that we maybe haven't been acknowledging. And this makes me think of, well, we all have light and we all have shadow. And in trying to be good people, often what we can do is suppress the parts of us that we think are ugly or the parts of us that we think are wrong. And that can mean, you know, suppressing our emotions in the most basic form and most of us don't want to feel uncomfortable emotions we don't want to feel guilt or shame or, or things like jealousy or hatred or anger but when we stuff those emotions down and don't meet them and we don't acknowledge them and realize well why has this come up you know our emotions are a great compass that can help us guide us through life you know and if if we stuff it down, it sort of sits in us and it festers away. And that means we're denying a part of ourselves. We have to be willing to acknowledge that within each of us is the capacity for great love and great darkness, great light and great dark, great love, great, you know, fear, pain, hatred, whatever it is, we all have that spectrum of emotion. So Sariel is coming in like a balancing angel to sort of help us integrate both those parts of us because this means that what happens is we start to transcend. Unconditional love is about coming into a place of harmony and balance with all things, light, dark, good, bad, right, wrong, male, female, and looking at all of those components of our consciousness and our, our ourselves and this realm without judgment. So Sariel is sort of bringing in this beautiful, um, it's like a pearlescent, almost a dove grey, but pearlescent silvery grey light. And it's like the merging of the light and the dark, the merging of the black and the white. And it's 
really beautiful, this sort of silvery gray energy. It's almost a metallic energy. And Sariel is saying, I'm coming to help alchemize these parts of you that you are holding in judgment. It's where you're judging yourself for holding lower emotions and holding pain in your heart. Um, and, you know, Sariel can help take you on a journey in through the darkness in your heart and some of this darkness it doesn't even come from this lifetime so we might be sitting there going oh i don't like this emotion and we don't know where it comes from but we have to be willing to be curious about where it might come from because it might not even have come in in this life and a lot of us now have the opportunity to clear a lot of our stuck old karma so working with your emotions in this way is really powerful work simple work but powerful work so it might be that you want to just sort of sit with it and be like, right, where am I feeling grief? And this is the word that they're giving us tonight. And you might not even be aware that you had grief sitting somewhere in your energy field. But I think all of us to some degree are grieving, you know, what the world was meant to be, you know, this beautiful heavenly garden with everyone living in peace and everyone looking after each other. So that, at the at the simplest level in our collective consciousness is a grief for what could have or should have been, right? But that's what we're returning to now. And so we need to heal that because when we have a trapped emotion and we're, we're holding it, we're not meeting with it and transmuting it, we're almost giving that frequency out. And it just, as we know with the law of attraction, like attracts like. Yeah. So be willing to meet your grief, to acknowledge your grief and allow Saria to just lift it like a, a, a bubble of darkness up and out through the crown of your head. Lift it away and just be willing to say, I, I'm no longer, I no longer need to carry this trapped grief around with me any longer. And just come into your heart and hold yourself in real tender, loving compassion really really deep love and just be willing to to just let go of any judgment of yourself and especially any judgment of yourself i'm kind of getting if if anyone's holding any judgment of themselves and feeling like they're being weak for having feelings or for being sensitive or for having um emotions it's definitely not a weakness it's the greatest strength you can have so you can call on Sariel to continue to work with you in that way and help you move through those emotions. And that angel is bringing a beautiful shower of this very soft, silvery, pearlescent, grayish white light all the way over and around. And it sort of reminds me of really soft gray bunny rabbit fur. It's very calming, soothing, beautiful energy, like a beautiful shower of that light and wrapping you up in wings of that light to comfort you so that you feel safe to release whatever you need to release going forward. And just the word uh, coming through is gentleness. Be very, very gentle with yourselves as you work with this angel and as you work with these, um, these emotions. Don't judge yourself for having emotion, you know, any emotion. Don't judge it. Embrace it. Allow it. Acknowledge it, and then you can release it and integrate it. So, yeah, beautiful angel to come through. I wasn't expecting that one, really. You, so we, we do still expect rainbows and unicorns yeah. these days, don't we? But, yeah. 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 No, that was wonderful. Thank you very much um, well, for that. And thank you, Archangel Sariel, for coming through and uh, and, give, and giving that, mess, that message to us. Um, it, it's it's always wonderful when they when they come through and, uh, and 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 they give us those those messages. So before we finish up, Alex, do you have any um, insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Just honor, just honor the angel within you. You know, just acknowledge that you you have the power to achieve anything that your soul is calling you to achieve and just say yes to anything that sets your heart on fire and um, follow that, follow that because you're divine and you can't be anything other than that. So, 
Beautiful. So I hope everyone that you enjoyed this and um, found insightful in the words of wisdom, Alex, Gabe will help you um, and Archangel Sarah Gabe will help you on uh, your journey. So Alex, if people want to get in touch with you, apart from obviously joining the Angelic Summit 2020 next year, how can they um, uh, connect with you? They can go to alexandrawenman.com. Um, I'm. I've got a, a tomorrow night. I'm doing an Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Alchemy call, and then on the tenth, I'm actually teaming up with Steve Nobel, and we're doing a, an angelic light webinar as well, which also is about all the energies coming in next year. It's preparation because it's kind of already begun. So everything is on there on alexandrawenman.com, and then my events is slash events. Um, I'm also on Instagram, Alexandra C. Wenman, and please check out the Alexandra Wenman Show on YouTube. Ray's soon to be on there. I just need to pop your interview up. It'll be up in the next few weeks. And, um, yeah, we lots of interviews and there's channel guidance and all kinds of things on there. So I'd love to hear feedback from you all as well if anyone wants to get in touch and uh, with any questions, feel free. So yeah, And, and it, is, it is a good show. I've watched previous shows that are... Um, of, of Alex's shows and around there, yeah, some of them are very insightful and the conversations are absolutely um, brilliant on them. So, so do 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 check it out. Um, so thank you, um, Alex, and thank you everyone for watching. And um, uh, I would like to invite you to share this video um, out to um, anyone you think uh, may benefit from this um, with with the wisdom and the guidance of Alex and the angels. Um, you, you know, if, if they feel a little bit lost, a little bit stuck, um, you know, it'll, it could help them get clear on their destiny. And if you have reached that crossroads in your life where um, you need help in finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. You know, reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call um, to find out more about each other and how I can help you um, get clear on your destiny and help you move further along your journey where you're supposed to be. And I look forward to you joining me next Monday, the 9th of December at 8 p.m. for the next edition of the Angels and Destiny show. So again, thank you um, everyone for watching and uh, thank you Alex again for being on the show. It's been brilliant having you back and let's do it again next year. Let's do it again next year. Thank you so much, Ray. And thank you, everyone, for watching. And have a wonderful Christmas as well. Yes, yes, it, it is Christmas. And I won't say anything about it <laughs> <laughs> Because I've still got another few few shows. In fact, I'm even doing a show on Monday, the 23rd of December. So I, I, I can say Merry Christmas to everyone then. <laughs> we're officially in December tonight, so we're allowed, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think we're allowed to now. P de decorations are going up everywhere now. I noticed houses last night, so yeah, I think we're definitely in the Christmas, in in the Christmas time now. So again, oh, Jackie says thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for watching the whole show, Jack. <laughs> and that. So again, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you so much, Alex, and I will speak to you all again next Monday. Take care. Bye.